Ring first, fighting out of the red corner, wearing white trimmed with gold and weighing in at 126 pounds. His professional record, 17 victories against three defeats. 10 of his 17 victories are by knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, from Pensacola, Florida, introducing the North American Boxing Federation champion and the challenger, Derek Mostaine! And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing yellow, trimmed with green, coming in at 124 and three quarter pounds. His professional record, 43 victories, 30 by knockout, against only one defeat, with two draws, and he has captured two world championships. Ladies and gentlemen, from Flushing, New York, presenting the WBU featherweight champion of the world, the Flushing Flash, Kevin Kelly! Kevin, call Tom, belly button, right? All right, right there, right gentlemen, we've gone over this with the rest of them, all right? Low blow, here you go for both of them. Stand up, stand up, smoke. From here down, from low blow, here down. Anything yeah. above that's clear, all right, fellas? Protect yourselves at all times, the baby at all times. Questions, gentlemen? Questions? Good luck yeah. to both of them. Good luck, guys. Roy Jones has been a real loyal friend to Gaynor, getting him many opportunities for fights on his undercards. We'll see if he's done him a favor by getting him this opportunity against a much more experienced fighter. We'll also see how much Kevin Kelly has left. Kelly was unbeaten before his January 7, 1995 war with Alan. Gonzalez, it hasn't been easy for him since then. Derek Gaynor wants to remind Kelly of some of the punishment he's taken in the past two years as he starts out more aggressively than is normally his style. Two southpaws in there against each other. Now, as a veteran fighter, the one thing you want your opposition to do, a younger fighter, is to come out and try to punch. Get yourself winded, then the veteran takes over. So Gaynor's got to pace himself don't do anything out of the ordinary. <laughs> Kelly's job tonight will be to keep his head moving. You just can't stand in front of this guy and not move your neck from side to side. He's tall, he's got the, uh, the, 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 the reach advantage. And any time, because he's so thin, he can slip a straight right, uh, left hand right on your chin. So Kelly needs the head movement to get inside of Gaynor's dad. That's right. And when you're fighting the younger, inexperienced fighters, they throw a lot of shots. They don't even know they're going to do it. And those shots hurt. They open up cut. you got to keep your head moving. Kelly's saying to us yesterday, all you have to do is look at the two of us to see what the fight is all about. I've got to get inside and go at his body. He wants to keep me out at the end of his long punching range. That may not be the smartest thing to do because this thin guy has been accustomed to the thicker guys because he's tall going to his body. He knows how to fight that kind of defense. Kelly landing a left hand to the body. Gaynor staying upstairs and trying to fend Kevin off with the jab as Kelly increasingly is trying to wade in and get inside on Gaynor. Well, Kelly is also going up against reflexes. Sometimes you throw a shot and this guy just does something. You don't even, he doesn't know what he's going to do. So you got to keep your defense, your hands up at all times. first 41 fights of his professional career in his last five fights a loss a draw and a technical draw and what Kelly want to do in the first few rounds stay active keep your point system up don't try to hit this guy with your hardest punch Yeah. 
this is going to be until when and if Kelly tags Gaynor with something meaningful. And you saw the low punch output for Kelly in the first round, only 27 attempted punches. His trainer, Phil Borgia, is going to want him to throw that many jabs, let alone that many punches. He wants a lot more punch output from Kelly. You notice Kelly moves his head once a punch is thrown. You got to keep that head in motion at all times. Gainer landing a little counter as Kelly lunged inside. Now Kelly also, because he's fighting a younger opponent with a lot of muscle tension, use a lot of feints to make him get tired. Every time you use a feint, he'll throw a shot. So, Gator has begun throwing punches with more authority in the last year or two, George. Up to that point, he was primarily a slapper. As he tires, his, as this fight goes on, he's liable, liable to open the glove up and start slapping again. Kelly is playing the wrong game. He's looking for one or two shots. That's not going to happen that easy. But he landed a left hand over the top and has gotten Gaynor's attention as he now pins him against the ropes and tries to go to the body. Kevin Kelly thinks that his punching power can make the difference against Gaynor, and right now he is rocking him. Very strong sequence of body punches, and Gaynor with a big comeback. And with no head movement, George, Kelly was a sitting duck for that combination. And most importantly, sometimes you don't want to wake up these sleeping giants er this early in the fight. Make him do this a little later after you use up a little muscle tension. A smoke has also to make some fire. Hard left hand shot by Derek Smoke Gainer. more leather in round two than was the case in round one on both sides. Now Kelly, as a veteran, should know, don't follow a puncher. One thing no fighter wants to do is follow a puncher around the ring. You let him follow you. tempting fate by staying at ringside very close to fight time to root for smoke game now for the first time kevin kelly is starting to use his face you got to make this kid use up some of that energy by faking him and 
every time you hit these youngsters, they're going to pay you back, so you better be covering up after you touch them. You heard Alton Merkerson between both the first and second and second and third rounds in his discussions with Gaynor saying, you got to throw the right hand before you try to land the left. At least touch him with the right hand jab before you try to bring that power punch. Another good body shot by Kelly. Instructions from this corner. Trying to weaken the taller, thinner Gaynor. There again, Kelly has his head standing up one spot, not moving it. Kevin Kelly had total respect for Derek Gaynor before the start of the fight. I think Gaynor has gotten his attention now. Gaynor's real effective with this overhand left. Seems like he can't miss it. And this is referee Frank Santori telling Smoke Gaynor not to hold Kevin Kelly. And Kevin Kelly's trainer, Phil Borgia, made it clear that he would talk to officials about Gaynor's habit of holding. There's that sneaky overhand left again. Whenever Gaynor wants to get his attention, he throws that overhand left. Rippling up on the jab there. Derek Gaynor still, for the most part, beating Kevin Kelly to the punch. This will be called a slip. That's that quick overhand left. It's going to be called a slip. Not with what you want, but it hurts. What might have happened there is that in the process of seeing one fighter miss a punch and twist around, he might have missed the punch that landed. We'll get a look at that later. Gaynor sees it. And now Gaynor goes down. That hurt. This is going to be called a knockdown. This is a knockdown. The previous one was ruled a slip. And that, of course, has implications for the scorecard, where Kelly will get extra credit and Gaynor will not. Absolutely, and it looked like a clean knockdown by Gaynor. see what happened. There was the knockdown, a clean, hard punch to Gaynor. Gaynor says, yeah, you got me. And we didn't see what preceded that, but I have a feeling that Gaynor had his foot on top of Kevin's foot, pinning Kelly's shoe when Kelly went down, and that may be why the referee elected the ruler to slip. Let's see how Gaynor reacts to having been having taken that big punch. knowing that if he misses, something heavy can come back at him. Let's see if that'll change the momentum of the fight. The momentum of the fight, which up to that point had belonged mostly to Derek Smoke Gaynor. Kelly Kelly, Kevin Kelly has taken him a few rounds to understand that this Gaynor fights better moving backwards. You gotta let him come forward a bit and counter him for a couple of rounds. Early in the fourth round, Gaynor seems less interested in throwing those big leads. He is so dangerous, he's like a cat. You corner him, you're going to get scratched up bad. Half 
of the combination by Gaynor landed. The right hand missed. The left hand found some Kevin Kelly turf. Kelly's right eye swelling just a little bit. You'll recall that badly swollen eyes helped to cost him the Gonzalez fight. Now, for the first time, Kelly's using an overhand left. And he landed it solidly there. It was because he closed in the range a little bit. He's standing too far away from Smoke, and Smoke is getting all of the heart, the lead shot. Close it up and be the inside fighter. And you heard Alton Merkis in between rounds saying to Smoke, don't forget the fight when you get inside. You lost two fights because you wouldn't fight on the inside. You must prove you'll do it here. Kelly's level of caution in going in at Gaynor tells you that Gaynor has landed some solid stuff early on. Gaynor confidence gets better and better because of the bruise on Kelly's eye. Three punch combination, four punches, five punches, six punches by Gaynor. And Kelly goes down, and his right eye is a mess. He took a shot early before that combination landed and was just trying to cover up and get through the round. Bill Boers is yelling at the referee that Kelly's been thumbed in the eye, and now Kelly comes to Frank Santori to make the point himself. started to hold his eye, claiming he has been thumbed. You think anything has happened in this fight so far, guys? <laughs> wow, Kevin Kelly's right eye is functionally closed. It's a total mess. And he's fighting like he want to win anyway. And you heard his trainer, Phil Borgia, saying, forget it, you're just going to have to work around it. And down goes Gaynor. And he's hurt. He's wobbled. He's got more than two minutes to, to try to survive this fight. Very wobbly legs for Gaynor. Very wobbly legs. Kevin Kelly drawing on his desperation and now he takes leather in return on the blind side. Yeah. Kevin Kelly was at ringside when Arturo Gatti came back from two eyes like this to knock out his opponent. He's trying to do the same thing, and suddenly the life has come back to Gaynor. Kelly remembering to go to the body as they clinch. He's blind on the right side and swinging away hard from the left. Midway through the fifth. Gaynor's been down in the round. Gaynor's starting to pump punches into that close Kevin Kelly right eye. is heavily pro gainer they'll try to keep his motivation up regardless of what damage kelly's able to do kelly came out throwing punches in bunches george now he's 
trying to load up one at a time. Yeah, well, he's desperate now. His eyes are about to close. He knows now what he was trying to do earlier. He has to do now. He's got to land a good shot, and he's got to do it quick, or this kid is going to pick on that eye until that eye closes. Yeah, but, but George, the way he's running away, Gaynor, and just trying to take an occasional wide swing, he really isn't in position to take advantage of the bad eye. He's just looking to survive right now. Well, he'll survive, and if he continues to go round after round, that right eye of and Kevin Kelly is just going to get worse and worse because he cannot see him on one side. As Kevin Kelly goes back to his corner, he goes to one of the greatest cut men in the business, Al Gavin. And it's up to Gavin now to keep Kevin in the fight. Pay close attention to me. Look in my eye. Look what you did with one eye. Right? Pay attention to me. Rinse this up. You need to pick it up when you're on the inside. He's won. He ain't gonna win the title one. You understand me? Gotcha. Increase the jab, work your knees, and work your turnovers. He's there when you're on the inside. You got me. You, got me. you trust me? Here's the knockdown as the almost one-eyed Kevin Kelly lands a looping left. Has anybody seen Kelly? I've seen Kelly, and he's never disappointed us with any of his fights. Here he comes back, trying to finish it, but Gaynor hangs on. Kelly's a brave soul. Round six begins. Derek Gaynor's punch out foot, which had been up around 60, slipped to 27 in the fifth round as he was running away from Kevin most of the time. Harold Letterman, your card. Okay, Jim. The referee thanks to Tory 12 times to clean the water in the corner of Derek Gaynor. I got a 3 1 1. Derek Gaynor, Kevin Kelly rapidly catching up after that 10 8 round to the fifth. I tell you the honest about truth, the third round I would have scored 10 to 10 because I really thought they were both clean knockdowns. And you know I never score even rounds. But that one absolutely one knockdown neutralized the other. Gaynor two points ahead. Kelly catching up. But Harold. Can you score at 10 10 when Jim, one was ruled a legal knockdown? Jim, it makes, it knock. makes no difference. I can score around 10 to 8 without a knockdown. I can score around 10 to 8 with a knockdown. I have that option. I so choose to exercise that option. I would have scored at 10 to 10. It was certainly an even run. I thought that Danny's knockdown was a clean knockdown. Kelly's was a clean knockdown. Nothing against the rules of doing that. Larry? I have the fight even because I've given Kelly a 10-8 round as well as a 10-9 round, three rounds to two for Gaynor, but I have it even on points. Gaynor starting to fire again, smokes the left. You know, Kelly is playing the wrong game. He's waiting and waiting and waiting, and believe me, that's Gaynor's game. You just gotta throw punches, keep punches coming all the time. That's the only way you're gonna keep Gaynor thinking. You stand back a moment, he slings that powerful straight left hand. And I think he's starting to hurt Gainer for the body was shot and like hurt that. him, he's hurting him good. That's correct. Hard left hand shot by Gainer right on the blind eye. And that stopped Kelly for the moment. Kelly, when he waits, Gainer decides, you're not going to do anything, I'm going to do something. to make a veteran do is wait, wait, and then you tag him. Gainer able to load up the left hand and just pound away on Kevin Kelly's blind side. And I think I agree with you, George. I think Kelly needs a hotter flurry of punches, more activity. And when you're not throwing punches, you got to move your head constantly, constantly barb weave. Quick right hand by Kelly as he sneaked in. Gainer backing away, backing away, backing away. He'll try to use the jab to stay out of trouble and pinpoint opportunities to target that right eye of Kelly. Still to come, our videotape replay of Julio Cesar Chavez versus Oscar De La Hoya. You haven't missed it if you tuned in late. Stay with us. Right now, Roy Jones is being upstaged by a preliminary fight as well as the tape of a week old fight. <laughs> I need you to work in him. 
hands. If you don't want to get hit, you've got to get inside and work right. your hands. Do you Keep your head to me, Kevin. Did you hear what I just said? Kevin, you've got to be on this man's ass, damn it. Got Hold on, Phil. Do you understand me? I understand you. Okay, you can't be outside, because then you're going to get hit with the ones you can't see. Work your way in with the jab and let it go. He don't want to fight when you're on the inside. I got you. And if you have to, you know where that head goes when he's pulling you down, goddammit. If the ref ain't going to do it, we got to do it. I got you. Yeah, it's in combination. Combination. Give me the mouth. There you see the big left hand that Kelly couldn't see. Has anybody seen Kelly? It's can Kelly see? You heard the instruction from the corner. The little guy has to get inside on the taller guy. Round seven begins. George, we saw a little trace of blood under Kelly's right eye. Is that coming from inside the eye or out of the swelling? I think there's a cut underneath that eye, but we can't see it because of the swelling. What Kelly needs to do now is move over to the left side and run this fella back to the other side. He's allowing him to go on the blind side. All you got to do is run around there and chase him in the opposite direction. So you want him to move to his left? Yeah, you want to move him back around on your side where you got the good eye. And all you got to do is run over there and chase him the other way. Well, he gets tagged on the blind eye again. If Gaynor starts leading with that overhand left, He'll do damage to that eye. I don't know why his trainer wouldn't tell him, Kelly, go on the other side. Don't let him move to, to his left in that fashion. Move, make him move to the right. wildly and gave Kevin Kelly a chance to land two body shots there and Kevin didn't throw it. Naga man seemingly with a clear picture here in round seven of what he wants to do. The business to pick up greatly if only Kevin Kelly goes over and chases him in the opposite direction. He's allowing him to move in a direction that he wants to move. Is this the same thing as failing to cut off the ring? You don't really want to cut it off, just want to move him. If you want to move, allow him to move where he's ineffective. But you got to go around and just like herding cattle, make the cows go in another direction. Eric Gaynor using his hand speed and foot speed to land combinations against Kevin Kelly. Gaynor has controlled much of the fight with his quickness, his speed, and his willingness to get off first. Like that. Kevin Kelly with a kind of a seeing eye round. Following Gaynor from spot to spot, not doing much damage when he gets there. You just can't follow him around. You gotta get up close and keep your gloves on him in some fashion. Doesn't have to be hard, just keep your gloves on him. It's only a 17-foot square. A lot of people thought that would work against Gaynor, but Kelly hasn't been able to turn it to his advantage so far. And as Smoke Gaynor closes in on a possible upset win over Kevin Kelly, Roy Jones basks in the enjoyment of his own personally constructed day. Basketball for the USBL Jacksonville Barracudas in the afternoon, and now a title defense at 168 pounds tonight. Okay, okay. Walls is not taking uh, too many no. left hand shots. He's okay. Okay. No, I think he can go. Yeah, you can go. I can't see out of what I'm fighting. Let's go. Can you see out of the other? He's not taking too many shots. I'm fine. No, no, I can see. Okay. You gotta work, Doc. You gotta work. Look at me. You're outside. This is bull. You know, when, it, when you have a fight of cut on, under one eye, that's okay. You allow the fight to go. But when he can't, he clearly cannot see. This is too much of a disadvantage. You would stop it? I would stop the fight. Get this water. Nothing to be ashamed of. You can't see. You can't fight. 
and not only can you not see, it's visible to your opponent. When you fought Alex Stewart and both of your eyes swelled, were you still able to see out? I was them? able to see. And One thing you did to see. Him. He said he could not see. Yep. Well, in that last round, Kelly's punch out was dropped to 25. So he's badly hampered by the inability to see out of the right eye, and it's hurting him in a lot of different ways, both defending himself and mounting offense. But now here he comes again as he's able to pin Gaynor against the ropes. And this is when he does his best work. Well, that Gaynor's sharp as a cat. He knows exactly what he's doing. Cross there by Derek Gaynor. Misses short with that one. Lunges but doesn't get hurt because Kevin Kelly isn't able to follow up. Kelly concentrating on the body when he goes to the rope. That could help him. Gives him a chance to come back and go upstairs. Gaynor's hands still fast. One thing about when your eyes are closed, you have this itchy feeling all over your body and you just want to touch and protect yourself a lot more than you want to fight. Kelly stunned. Stunned now as Gator pounds him against the ropes. He got hit twice on the blind eye. Now, Gator has been the aggressor. About as aggressive as we've ever seen Derek Gaynor be in the ring. Solid left-hand lead. Kelly's guts. He's trying everything he's got. You wonder why Gaynor would even fight this kind of fight when he can really clearly stay on the outside and win. Blood trickling from Kevin Kelly's nostrils now. Both sides bleeding. Down goes Gaynor. A left hand. A big, big left hand. And Gaynor may not get up. He will not get up. Six. Why would he fight a fight like that? Arturo Kevin Kelly President. has done it. Gainer, his confidence soaring, got aggressive in that round it's and the, gave Kelly an opportunity, George. It's the old Billy Conn, Joe Lewis story. You win in a fight, I'm going for a knockout also, and it happens to him. Billy Conn. And staves of Arturo Gotti in the garden a couple months ago as Kevin Kelly, blind in the right eye, scores a dramatic bailout knockout of Derek Gainer. Gainer is still flat on his back. Kevin Kelly is a quality athlete. He's a real prize fighter. This is what real prize fighters do. They never give up. They keep coming at you. And we saw last weekend that one fighter with a bad eye didn't keep coming at you. You saw Kevin Kelly there trying to lift Gaynor up. He wanted to pay his respects to Derek Gaynor because I think Gaynor gave him a much better battle than Kevin ever expected from the young man. But at the end of the day, the old pro fighting in his 47th fight had the answer. Gaynor feeling strong looking at an opponent that he felt he had on the on the ropes and walks right into a big wild left hand dropped his right hand at the same moment that he threw the left that was the difference watch the right hand drop when gainer commits to this left hand boom all night he's been landing that shot those have been the same shot that's knocked him down one after the other each knockdown same punch why would gainer risk such an uh, to go mix it up with a, a, a club fighter like that. Home crowd was chanting. George, home crowd was chanting. Home crowd wanted to give him a, a big ovation for the knockout. He wanted to reward him, so he went after it, and he got caught. Stay out of your hometown. <laughs> Wasn't the crowd chanting for Khan against Joe Lewis? That's right. <laughs> Let's go to Michael Buffer for the particulars of this dramatic comeback KO. I did it. Thank you time. How about a round of applause for two featherweights in this ring who for seven and one half rounds 
gave us one hell of a war. The end comes at two minutes and 16 seconds of round number eight. The winner by knockout victory and still WBU featherweight champion of the world, the Flushing Flash, Kevin Kelly. tonight. Derek Gaynor. Final punch stat numbers between Kevin Kelly and Derek Gaynor, and you can see that Gaynor had the edge in punches thrown, punches landed, connect percentage. As George Foreman pointed out, he was tactically in control of the fight. But he gave away that control by getting aggressive and trying to do something spectacular. It's the old story. You keep winning a fight, you're doing it easily. Why go in and mix it up with a guy who's knocked you down already once or twice? Stay away, stay away, get those points, and don't go for the big one. Let's go.